take heed that no man deceive you. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in divers places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Breaking new details about North Korea's missile launch, Kim Jong-un's regime firing what's believed to be an intermediate-range ballistic missile over Japanese airspace for the second time. We are following a developing story out of Texas where a number of people were shot, including children of the First Baptist Church of Sutherland Springs. The breaking news, the state of emergency in California where 12 wildfires are burning right now. One in particular, the so-called Valley Fire, is... At least 59 people killed. Now the deadliest mass shooting in modern American history. Among the victims, Lisa Romero, a high school... At 11.15 this morning, as services were letting out of Church of Christ at Burnett Chapel on Pinhook Road, a gunman arrived in there. Hurricane Harvey intensifying rapidly, expected to slam into Texas as a Category 3. We are going to, in the strongest possible terms, encourage the residents. We're coming on the air to update you on a major earthquake that has rocked central Mexico, a 7.1 magnitude quake that uh, has caused some buildings to collapse in, in and around Mexico City. The quake itself centered about 70... Praise God. This is Apostle Jerry Upton with uh, Honey Rock Victoria's Church International. And watch and pray before it's too late. We thank God for you joining us today. And we believe that today will be another day of revelation. We've been sharing with you about deception. But more or less what we are teaching is discernment for the last day. How you can walk in an area of discernment that will be beneficial to your life, your family, your church family, or whoever you may be connected with. We are in great need of discernment. We Last week, we were talking about exposing the beast system, false prophets in the midst of the church. I was reading several verses, and I want to take off from that point once again. In 2 Peter 2, 1 through 3, it says, but there were false prophets also among the people even as there shall be false teachers among you, who probably shall bring in damnable hearsays, even denying the Lord that brought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingered not, and their damnation slumbered not. And I'll show you one of the keys that would be in operation would be covetousness or a spirit of greed that's manifesting in many places today where the majority of what is talked about is what can I get, what's in it for me. And many times it's treating God like that he is a gigantic slot machine. I pull the lever to get what I want. Well, it said this in 2 Peter 2, 1 through 3. It says that there would be an operation of false prophets and false teachers in the last days. That their actual agenda would be the love of money. And we are witnessing this especially. In America yes God wants to bless us and yes God wants to prosper his people but we need to know the purpose of prosperity prosperity is not just so you can have more prosperity is not just so you can get more you're living in one of the richest countries in the world what you take for granted like water like good roads like food. Well, you take for granted many nations don't have access to that at all. 
But yet, one of the biggest things that is so popular today is teachings that major on things, stuff, money, greed, covetousness. And Peter already warned us that this is the way it would be. You see so many shows, even here, that people's main objective is to talk about getting more stuff. Well, this is not something that the Word of God has not addressed. It has addressed it quite well. In Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 16 through 18, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. They make you vain, or they cause you to focus on the carnal and the fleshly realm only. They speak a vision of their own heart and not out of the mouth of the Lord. They, they say still unto those that despise me, the Lord had said, you shall have peace. And they say unto everyone that walketh after the imagination of his own heart, no evil shall come upon you. For who has stood in the counsel of the Lord and had perceived and heard his word? Who had marked his word and heard it? Those scriptures don't describe what we're living in right now, especially in what is called the evangelical Christian society or movement. Then I don't know what could be even more clear. Thoughts that I didn't send them, yet they speak, saying, Thus saith the Lord. And that's one of the reasons why last week I gave you some tools on how that you can discern what you're hearing and who is speaking it. In Ezekiel chapter 13, verse 9, And my hand shall be upon the prophets that see vanity and that divine lies. They shall not be in the assembly of my people, neither shall they be written in the writings of the house of Israel, neither shall they enter into the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord God. If you're hearing teaching that drives you toward vanity, the carnal realm, the fleshly realm, especially as it relates to you having more things, rather than causing you to go toward the presence of Almighty God, you need to examine who you're listening to. You need to examine the words that are coming out of their mouth because Jeremiah and Ezekiel prophesied that this is the way that it would be. And then in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13 through 15, listen to this. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Now, that's pretty plain right there because it tells us to take a look at what we're seeing, what we're hearing, and what is being spoken. And as we look at those things, is this causing me to focus more on Jesus or is it causing me to focus more on me? Does it cause me to have a heart for God or does it cause me to have a heart for things. Now, one of the things that was a key is that there is a spirit of witchcraft and control over the minds of many of God's people. The spirit of divination, I want, I want to tell you a little bit about it. 
Because in Acts 16, we see it in operation. From the 16th through the 31st verse, it says, it says it this way, as we went to prayer. Now, I want to tell you about false prophets and teachers. False prophets don't want you seeking God for yourself, but want you to seek them and depend on them more than the Holy Spirit. People many times go from place to place trying to get a word from a man or a woman instead of relying on the Holy Spirit. Instead of going into the prayer closet and seeking God for themselves, they go from this convention to this convention to another convention trying to get a word from somebody rather than depending on the Word of God and the Holy Spirit to lead them and guide them. That's the very thing that sets people up for major deception and is extremely popular in our day and time. There was a young lady that was following Paul and Silas around. She had a spirit of divination. She was accurate in what she was saying but it was a demonic spirit that was leading her. One of the things that I want to show you today is how this spirit of divination or witchcraft operates. The word divination comes from the Greek word puthon and translate in English as python. Symptoms of a python attack may include feeling intimidated and pressured, helpless and vulnerable, loss of passion for God, looking more to a man or a woman than to God himself. The objective of this spirit is to place you under its control and squeeze the very life out of you. Now, I know that many of you may have never heard these things before but it's very important that you understand how the spiritual realm operates. And I'm not holding anything back. I want to teach you how you can stand protected from these operations. The spirit of divination works hand in hand with a familiar spirit. We see that by looking at 1 Samuel 28, verse 6 through 7. Here's what it says. And when Saul inquired of the Lord. The Lord answered him not, neither by dreams, nor by Urim, nor by prophets. Then said Saul unto his servants, Seek me a woman that hath a familiar spirit, that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servants said to him, Behold, there is a woman that hath a familiar spirit at Endor. Now, one of the things that people find themselves doing when they can't hear from God, when it seems like heaven is silent, they start seeking out people to tell them God's will for their lives. Now, I don't minimize that God raises up men and women to assist you in seeking him. But I do want you to know something. God never raises up a man or a woman to take the place of the Holy Spirit in your life. He just doesn't do it. He just doesn't raise up someone where you can be more dependent on what they're telling you than seeking God for yourself. Our church, our churches are full of people that never commune with God, never talk to God, never read his word, never pray, never intercede. And then they wonder why they are under such a spirit of control that is squeezing the very life out of them. Let me say this to you, because I'm going to continue this in our next broadcast. If you today have found yourself in that kind of situation of where you now are more dependent on a preacher or a Bible study teacher, or someone, a friend, then you are God. Then right where you are, 
you can repent. You can say, God, I have been led astray. I turned from this way, and I turn to you. I will not allow anyone to have top priority over my life more than you yourself. And I receive my cleansing and my healing, and I thank you for making me whole. If you pray that with me, God will touch your life. And God will begin to restore you. And I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll pick this up next week on Watch and Pray before it's too late. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in to Watch and Pray Before It's Too Late with Apostle Jerry Upton. If you would like more information about the YouTube channel or the ministry, visit us on the web at honeyrockchurch.org or follow us on Facebook at Honey Rock Church International at facebook.com. Again, thank you for tuning in.